You know, I'll admit that as this show enters its ninth year, it gets harder and harder to figure out how to fill the minutes. We've already been through the Bible one and a half times. We've been through the Quran, the Book of Mormon, the Case for Christ, hundreds of Christian movies, dozens of Christian shorts, scores of Christian songs. So there are times when we really have to search high and low for something new to talk about. But then there are those other times. <laughs> times when something happens that's so singularly bizarre that we have to scrap whatever we plan to do for the show and set aside some time to talk about it. And ladies and gentlemen, etc., this is one of those times. Yeah, say what you will about David Icke, but he's never sent his crazy to my baby. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so let me first set the stage for you here, okay? Lucinda has decided to fill Eli's house from basement to attic with a dense concentration of toys. She has, yes. She wants Eli and Anna to have to literally swim from room to room through a mass of wall-to-wall, floor-to-ceiling toys. And to that like end... Scrooge McDuck, it's fun, right? Exactly, yeah. mm -hmm. right. That's her plan. She just sent stuffed animals, books, balls, trucks, tops, tricycles, dolls, blankets. At one point, I am not making this up. Apropos of no birthday or traditional gift giving holiday, Lucinda sent him a ball pit, <laughs> which yes. remained set up in my living room for three weeks because he adored it and we didn't want to take it away from him. <laughs> okay. It, you sure it's not because you got kicked out of the one at McDonald's and you wanted to have your own that you would irrelevant, have in your house? Irrelevant whether or not I bonded with my son. Is it irrelevant? Just the, the fact that those. Two things happen together. Doesn't mean they happen because of. So, of course, by now, Google has figured out that any time an ad displays something with rounded edges and a smiley face on it, there's like a one in three chance Lucinda's going to buy it. So the other day, she sees an ad with these cute little animal puzzles for toddlers, and it has all three of the things that she looks for in a gift for Eli's baby. It's an object. The company is willing to ship it, and they take money in exchange for that. Check, check, check. Yep. Cool. So she sends the Bosnick household what she thinks is an innocent box of zoo animal puzzles. There's an elephant, there's a little lion, there's a little camel, etc. What she doesn't know at the time. Indeed, what she could not possibly know just from looking at the Amazon listing was that the whole puzzle collection was Noah's Ark themed. What's more... It was made by crazy people. <laughs> How crazy, you ask? Hold on to your goddamn seats, my friends. <laughs> Does it get delivered by Ken Ham in a rolling canoe? Almost. Very it's close. Almost that. Yes. Very close. Now, I know what you're thinking, right? The very act of cutesy toys about a global genocide equals crazy people, Noah. But these people are crazy even compared to other people making cutesy Noah's Ark shit because these people are from the Noah Hyde World Center, a <laughs> super culty group <laughs> from a Judaic offshoot that I've, I've actually heard referred to as Judaism light. It's the dumbest name. Right? They're, they're trying to make an, an adjective out of Noah. There's so many better. Isn't Noachian already a name? For that? I'm, I'm sure it is, yeah. Knowest shit. So, no. <laughs> so, yeah, they're apparently the kind of group that would, for example, evangelize to toddlers by sneaking religious pamphlets into seemingly secular puzzles. Okay, but people, think about how crazy a Jew you have to be to evangelize. There is no hell. You are bothering people for the love of the fucking game. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but... That kind of makes me like Jewish people more and Christian people less, honestly. Yeah. Like, yeah, for, love, for the love true. of the game. And <laughs> Christian people think I'm going to hell forever and they don't do shit. They don't help at all. Right. They send me a book every once in a while. That's my cousin. I sent you this book and ruined your dad's funeral. You're yeah. welcome. Yeah, right, right. Damn. That's lazy. Do better. All right. So, so here's how this actually plays out. We, we get this text from Anna on Monday where she's like, hey, did you guys send us these puzzles? And Lucinda's like, yeah. And Anna's like, was it a prank or did you not know that they were going to come with religious pamphlets? And <laughs> is like, the fuck? <laughs> so Anna sends us a picture of the pamphlet in question. Lucinda goes full diatribe on an Amazon review. And I text Heath and Eli about switching up our plans for the C segment. Yeah. And you guys thought I installed those DEF CON sirens for nothing. No, no. That. Andrew insisted on it, actually. He told <laughs> us we had to for insurance reasons. So now to this point, you, the listener, are probably thinking, well, Noah, this is a frustrating circumstance, no doubt. But it seems like something that you would just tack on to the end of the show for patrons or perhaps allude to in a diatribe more than something that you would devote an entire segment to. But that's because you're thinking of a normal religious pamphlet. 
you know, one that would only tell children that they're going to be tortured by scary monsters in an eternal fire lake if they ever lie or get jealous. But this one contained the Noah Hyde laws. And these motherfuckers are crazy even before you have to present them to toddlers, which is why we're going to break them down in a segment that we call, I guess, God Awful Pamphlets. So, okay. First, you got to picture the artwork on this pamphlet. It's got Noah in the bottom right. He's got his, his all his little animal buddies on his little ark. Everybody's smiling ear to ear as they float over the countless corpses of their family and friends. <laughs> okay, but I totally get that part. That's everybody's dream if we're being honest, right? Like Never. I was right. They were wrong. They're dead. I'm floating happily. That's that's everybody. You just, I you wish. Your, see, you should have to honest. say that before you enter a tontine with anybody, right? So, <laughs> and so everything's bright colors and Disney grins. And at the top, it says, what are the seven Noahide laws? Now, as we continue through this, I have to emphasize once more the fact that this came with a set of puzzles that is specifically targeted to one to two-year-old children. The target audience <laughs> here are babies. Yeah. <laughs> And by the way, on Amazon, they advertise it as STEM learning. Yeah, right. <laughs> STEM. Okay, I know puzzles have shapes. Shapes, that's geometry. Geometry is math. And that's the M in STEM is math. But you're fucking two. It's goddamn shapes. Right, it's shapes. exactly. <laughs> shapes learning. So, okay. So, what are the Noahide laws? Well, the seven, this is the, a quote from the pamphlet. The seven Noahide laws are rules that all of us must keep regardless of who we are. For, sorry, this is more tortured construction here regardless of who we are or from where we come. Without these seven things, it would be impossible for humanity to live together in harmony. Would it? Okay, so these are going to contain a lot of advice about food and shelter, mm. where to find fresh water <laughs> on your own. Germ theory of disease. Sure, yeah, how to avoid a hail of arrows when you paddle up to a remote island full of heathens who don't know about Noah yet. And hold on, they're somehow living in harmony. Without those seven laws, wait a minute. Maybe I should, and I'm dead. I'm right, dead Right, yeah, unfortunately. This is a real thing that's happened to me. Now, so, okay, so we're going to go through these seven laws, but now I, I have to say, I'm going to just say God where it means God, but apparently in a lot of Judaic sects, actually writing out God is taboo. So where I say God, you have to imagine that the pamphlet says G-D, right? Like they were trying to sneak a shit by the bots or something. So here we go. <laughs> it's their let's go, Brandon. It's so stupid. Yeah. <laughs> right. And again, I have to say this. This is advice for toddlers on how to live in the world. One, belief in God. Do not worship idols. <laughs> right. Because if anything says harmony, it's believing in God. Am yeah, I right, right people? Yeah. Uh -huh. By the way, I just sent a golden calf stuffed animal to your house, Eli. That's for real, for your child. Yep. I think we need to make these. Like, yes. 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 That would sell like, like crazy. Puzzle in a thunderstorm, golden calf stuffed animal. You give it to your shitty Christian <laughs> parents and kids. You don't and like, they yeah. love it. Make them, yeah. This is pricing out stuffed Carl's all over again, Heath. I'm not going through that again. <laughs> all right, number two. Respect God and praise him. Do not blaspheme his name. I like that they're allowing for someone who believes in God, but still will tell him to fuck himself. I think they're not. Well, and, and a two-year-old. Sure. Right? Again, so they're mostly worried about babies whose first words are, God damn it. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Number three, respect human life. Do not murder. They say to the toddlers... Okay. The corners on this puzzle are sharp, and I know what you're thinking, kid. <laughs> okay, but G D did a genocide. Isn't isn't that the whole thing with the story of Noah, right, Mom? Yeah, yeah right. Right. So I want to I want to respect him and praise him. Right. <laughs> that was the last rule. Uh, number four. I'm two. <laughs> respect <laughs> the family. Do not commit immoral sexual <laughs> acts. I'm two. <laughs> okay, the corners on this puzzle are sharp, and I know what you're thinking. <laughs> Again, he's two. So, like, if if this works as planned, it ends in a two-year-old having to ask mommy what an immoral sexual act is. Do you have a puzzle about it? <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, number five. Respect for others' rights and property. Do not steal. Okay, but isn't there justified stealing? Like, if the system's rigged to make you die of poverty, for example? Like, really, isn't this Wasn't, like a trolley problem, uh, I'm too? Jean Valjean was the bad guy. Was he not? 
I feel like he was the bad guy. Number six, <laughs> creation of judicial system. Pursue justice. <laughs> So you're saying that wasn't invented here in the United States? <laughs> <laughs> I could swear that was invented here. Okay, but what if the highest court gets politicized and they, they rule in favor of just like pure evil under the guise of originalism? Wait, what if, right, Mom? Like, what if Jean that Valjean happens? was the bad guy, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> so, And I want to be clear here because these seven laws are supposed to be drawn from the story of Noah. So they're claiming Noah as like the father of the modern judicial system based on the fact that he sentenced his son's offspring to eternal slavery for seeing his dick, <laughs> right? Yeah, they, that's that's what they mean by justice. Yeah. That, or they want my toddler to shoot off a guy's dick like RoboCop. Okay, actually, I take that back. That would be adorable that would and actually, awesome. Yeah, I would love yeah. to see. <laughs> that guy was a rapist. <laughs> All right, and, and, and listener, you probably don't think that I can make this pamphlet three times as crazy with the last bullet point, do you? You thought that having to tell two-year-olds to keep their dicks in their diapers was some kind of craziness high point, didn't you? Well, no. Nope. Number seven. Bring it home. This will be seared into your mind forever now. Respect all creatures. Do not eat flesh of an animal that is still alive. <laughs> Which of the cartoon animals <laughs> in the boat do you imagine is saying that? <laughs> smiley animals. Yeah, I think it's the hippo. Maybe. <laughs> I'm saying pug a peg of corn. Okay, oh, yeah. all right, sure, yeah. Uh, I know I look like sliced bread, but just stop. <laughs> stop. All right, well, I guess now that I've implanted the image of flesh-eating toddlers rampaging across the countryside devouring the still-beating hearts of their enemies, I think we've made our point. <laughs> they get to number seven. A two-year-old just spits out a live rat. rat? I don't know. I think the last four words, you're four words from the end, and you're like, this is the weirdest thing I've ever read. No, now it's the weirdest thing now I've ever read. Now it's the word. Okay. Why'd you give me this rat? <laughs> <laughs> Why do we even have these? Whether or not you thought I was going to eat it. All right. Well, that's all the pamphlet we've got for you today. But we'll be back with news on our line of stuffed golden calves soon. Heath, Eli, thanks again.